Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Debbie for introducing me. Thank you so much to David and to Matthew and to Shoshona of the event space. <laughs> um, I love it here. I, I know this is a fantastic forum for you. You can come for free and meet uh, a great many different photographers of all different levels and stripes and styles. And it's really a wonderful thing to be involved with. I come down every couple of months and I really enjoy it. Uh, we have our model for today is Corey. Stand up, Corey. Uh, we have worked together before, so I know Corey, um, but I will also be discussing tips about posing, tips on uh, drawing your subject out. Uh, if you're a portrait photographer or a headshot photographer or any kind of photographer that deals with people at any level, you always have that person who walks through your door and they're a little stilted, they're a little unsure because they haven't met you yet, they don't know what to expect sometimes. And one of my goals as a teaching pro is to help you overcome that with your subject, how you get your subject or your client to uh, feel comfortable with you, right? If you have a, a female come in and you're a male and there may be some apprehension right up front, you wanna be able to get rid of that apprehension, talk about things that are common to you and get that person to take their shoulders from going like this to being like this, okay? So they're comfortable with you. This is the B&H event space uh, mixing light presentation. Okay, I have a very short slideshow. Uh, there are no photos in it. I'm going to talk about the gear that we'll be using today. Uh, as a teaching pro and a shooting pro, I would rather have you see how things are done and ask your questions based upon <coughs> what's going on instead of sitting there looking at photos, okay? You can open a magazine anywhere and look at photos, all right, or online. But I want, you to, sh I want to show you how things happen how you can integrate the two systems, uh, the larger strobe lighting uh, and the smaller speed lighting. What you can do for triggers, how you can operate and control each, all right? No system is perfect yet. No system does everything, but there are ways around uh, that and there are ways to get creative and effective results uh, fairly simply, okay? Uh, who here owns speed lights? Oh, good job. Who here owns strobe lights? Good job. Who here integrates the two of them? Okay, a couple of you, all right. all right. My goal is to get all of you to be start doing that, all right? Because you can get great results with the two systems because they almost match perfectly. One's more powerful than the other. But my goal is to get you to integrate that more. Uh, I know we're at B&H Photo and they want you to buy a gear here, but I also want you to be able to use what you have, right? Use what you have effectively before you go out and spend for anything else, okay? So let's get to the slideshow, and then we'll do some shooting. I'll explain everything as we go. At the end of the slideshow, we'll do a Q&A, and then after each lighting setup, I'll do a Q&A. How's that sound? All right, good show. Okay, so I'm Bob Harrington. Thank you for coming. Uh, let's go. Welcome to the B&H Photo Event Space Mixed Light Presentation. This is a short slideshow. This is the I Love Me section, okay, because at this moment, it's all about me not anybody else. Uh, that's my company, Robert Harrington Studios. Uh, that's my website, my blog down below. On Twitter, it's Bob Harrington 2 On Facebook, it's Robert Harrington. And my email is bob at robertharringtonstudios.com. If you want a copy of the slideshow, send me an email and I'll send it back to you as a PDF, okay? And I do that for everybody, so if you want it, I'll send it back. Like I said, there's not a lot of photos, but there's some good information here. Okay, I do a lot of writing uh, and traveling and photo photography. My book out last year is called Photographic Lighting. It's by Ammonite Press and available, uh, I think they have the line here, otherwise Amazon.com or bar BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, my second book, One Speed Light, 16 Looks, is available on Blurb. You just go to blurb.com, search the title. Uh, it's a great little book, very similar to a little chat book. You open it up, here's the technique, this is how you do it, this is what you get at the end. If you do it, follow my instructions, hopefully. Uh, I also write freelance for Shutterbug Magazine. Uh, this past month I had the cover and two articles in their advanced lighting technique. 
issue, which was makes me happier and prouder to have done that because when I go to Barnes and Noble, I can see it on the shelf, and that's fun. Uh, my next book, Advanced Portraiture, is due out in 2014 sometime. Uh, I'm not sure when. Uh, that's the working title. I don't know what the end title will be, but uh, it's a great book on posing, on lighting, uh, every aspect of portraiture beyond learning the basics of exposure, light placement, and things like that. So I work with a bunch of companies. Expo Imaging is my key sponsor. Uh, they're the makers of the Rogue Flash Benders, which we'll be using today. Hensel Lighting, they make the larger studio strobe lights. Photix makes the uh, radio triggers. California Sunbounce makes the reflectors. Uh, I'm going to talk about this for one second. This is a California Sunbounce Sun Mover. You ever seen one of these? I love their products. Uh, the reason I love this product is, what shape is this? It's oval. Anybody had a round reflector you can't put back together again? Raise your hand. Hi. You can't, like, you have a hard time, yeah, doing the pretzel thing? Watch this. Because it's oval, it automatically wants to go back to this because it's oval. I just got this at the PDN and I've been traveling with it everywhere and I really enjoy it. Okay, uh, I also work with Temba Bags and Totally Rad Actions. Um, if you do any retouching, you can do them in your Actions palette, and I use the uh, Totally Rad Actions Portrait Retouch version 2. Okay, our gear for today. Let's talk about gear a little bit. On speed lighting, I'll be using SB910s um, and an SB800 with SD9 and SD8A battery packs. If you use speed lights, you should be using battery packs if you can. That will extend the life of your speed light and also give you more power and faster recycle times, okay? Um, two in Hensel Integra 500 watt second strobe lights. These are great strobe lights. I really enjoy the line. Uh, I started my career with Hensel. I sold them when my speed light career took off. Uh, I bought some pro photos and they kind of sit in my studio and now I travel everywhere with Hensel and I really like them. It's a nice unit, great price point uh, if you're looking to get into strobe light. We'll be using the Rogue XL Pro flash benders. Maybe the small Rogue flash bender and the grid, I'm not too sure yet. Uh, reflective and shoot through umbrellas today. So I'm hoping to get four or five different lighting looks for you. Okay, and show you how you can integrate key with speed light and fill with a strobe light. All right, something all along that line and we'll move some lights around and get something totally different. Uh, lighting gear continued. I'm working with the Photix Odin radio triggers. I really like this trigger system. Uh, it's very similar to the Pocket Wizard Flex or other radio trigger systems that have full TTL control. I can control my flashes and my strobe light from here. Only thing I cannot control on my strobe light is the power output, but I can turn it on and off from here. So I can turn my strobe light on, have it turned off here and it won't fire. I turn it back on here. Works like a champ, it works really well. So I have full control uh, of my two speed lights, either in TTL or manual, or I can turn on and off my strobe light. So this is a really great um, economical system as well that works fabulously. Uh, let's see. My, uh, the gear I brought with me, I trucked down from Connecticut today on the train, so I packed a really tight kit. I have four Manfrotto 105.2 BAC light stands, um, two Lumo Pro umbrella brackets. I don't know if they have Lumo Pro here, but they have Fotix or Fotec or uh, Westcott, and that's the bracket that attaches your speed light to the light stand. Um, I use Ansman 2850 milliamp AA batteries in my speed lights uh, and Ansman chargers back home. These are nickel metal hydride. If you're looking for a great battery that has a lot of power, uh, a long uh, life when you're using it and they recharge well. Um, these are the best batteries I've used so far. Uh, the nice thing about them is that this particular brand, the Nickel Metal Hydride, they don't have a memory. So if you're like me and you charge all of your batteries on a Monday after a weekend and then you wake up Tuesday and forget, you can charge them again and you won't injure the cell. You won't deplete the cell. The magic numbers. Who here is using a light meter? Couple of you? Okay, good. Who here is not using a light meter? Okay, it's kind of more, you can raise your hand, it's okay. 
It's okay. Be proud. It doesn't matter. Bike videos are expensive. Believe me. They're expensive and expensive. So what we're going to do today is we're going to not use a light meter. Being able to shoot tethered to my laptop helps us to learn, uh, you know, what our clipping, uh, where a light is working, where a light is not working, and helps you to teach you what to pay attention for. But when I shoot and when I teach, I always give everybody the magic numbers. And that's to set your camera to 1 1 25th of a second shutter speed, aperture 5.6, ISO 200. That's your jump off point. No matter what you're shooting, start there, okay? Because if you're not using a light meter, you're kind of going to be wondering, where do I start? This is a great jump off point, okay? Set your white balance to custom uh, or daylight. If you know how to take a custom white balance, go for it. If you don't, uh, set your white balance to daylight. Works really well for me. I get great color tone uh, just about perfectly out of my camera uh, with white balance to daylight. When you go outside, try to underexpose your frame, then add your speed light or your strobe light to expose your foreground. Okay, so you underexpose the background and then expose the foreground with light. Uh, I set my key light from when I'm using speed lights to manual mode at half power to start. So if you use this recipe, manual mode, half power, and those exposure settings, you can get a great uh, capture right up front. It's really a great place to start. And I set my hair background, edge lights, or whatever other lights I'm using, usually to about a quarter power, and I push them up or down as I see fit. All right? This simplifies everything. Who knows lighting ratios? Anybody? A little bit? Yeah, up and down, kind of, right? So um, my assistant couldn't make it today, Mariel. But if I said to Mariel, on my key, uh, key to fill, I want two to one ratio, and then key to hair, I want five to one, she would know what to do. Who knows what to do? Just studied that yesterday, too. Just studied that. Oh, what's your name? Jerome. Jerome says he just started studying that yesterday. Okay. I want to take that out of the equation for you. All right. So if you start with this recipe and go from there, think of it as you're, like, you're used, like you're baking a cake. All right. Or you're making brownies. Or you're making French. I'm really hungry for French toast right now. <laughs> I am dying for French toast. And I can't even explain why. So if you have a cup, a measuring cup, right, and you, it's one over one is full with milk, okay, then one over two is half, one over four is quarter. Those are your power settings. It's a very easy thing to pay attention to. And you set your power settings like that and don't worry about ratios yet. Learn to see the light and then learn the technical after, all right, because it, it can become very technical very quickly. Um, a lot of photographers use one, maybe two lights. Would never even pay attention to that. You know, I barely pay attention to it. Digital cameras allow you to see the LCD. You can see what's in the back of the camera. You can see what you're getting, right, as opposed to film. This is a lot more important during the film days. I recommend that you learn how to do it because it's a technical aspect of photography that will help you. But starting off, phew, drop it because it can get very difficult, right, Jerome? Yeah. <laughs> and it can, and Jerome says yes, and it can get very difficult very quickly. And then you're back to the where do I start thing. Right. So Jerome says it does make it easier when using a meter because you can meter your key, meter your hair. I don't use it like that. I meter my key at 5.6 and then I'll meter my hair. I don't pay attention to the ratio. I meter my hair at 4. I meter my edge maybe at 5.6 or 8 or something. Now I don't pay attention to the ratios. I think in my head, half, quarter, eighth, whatever. Okay. But definitely learn the ratios as you go along because it's an important aspect of photography, especially in lighting. Okay, like I said, this is a short slideshow, but I want to introduce you to somebody who's a very good friend of mine. Her name is Sally. And the best way to learn lighting is with Sally. And the reason I named her Sally is because I bought her from Sally's Beauty Supply. Okay, this is a styrofoam head that you would see in a storefront window with wigs on it and, right, the hair and makeup artist practice on it. And for $5, I have a model who will work for me at 2 a.m. when I can't sleep. Okay. I don't have to call up Corey at 2 a.m. because she'd be pretty unhappy with me at that point. Uh, and also she lives in New York and I'm in Connecticut. 
or I don't have to wake somebody up. So I put Sally on a table in my living room. You'll get a great view of my nice little living room back home. And this is how you learn to light. Okay, you can do this anytime in your home. No one's home on a Sunday afternoon. Set everything up and go to work. You can supplant the speed light for a strobe light, and it's the same thing. Once you begin to learn it, then you can add a backlight, hair light, edge light. But when I first started out, I had my kids helping me, and they loved me. After a year, they were kind of like, hmm, I'm not really loving it, Dad. What do you got for me? Then it became you know, a bribe. Well, I'll give you some candy. Just don't tell Mom. And then about a month after that, it became money. Then when they wanted money, I said to them, you know what? I can hire someone like Corey and get photos I can really use as opposed to you sitting in my chair like this. Because <laughs> you want the money, but you don't want to be sitting there. Everybody who knows you wants you to succeed, but they all don't want to help you. Or they say they want to help you, but when they sit down in the chair, they don't want to be there. I've been to that party. So here I have my key light into a reflective umbrella. Very simple look. Okay, I change my key light position to a side light. Okay. Same deal, all in my nice little living room back home, which is clean. Top light, all right, here's my setup. And then full frontal light, which is a very, uh, this is, I love this kind of look. It's kind of flat with a little bit of definition. Great for fill, this is a great lighting setup for fill light, especially if you're not using a reflector. Okay, and there it is, uh, all set up for me. I did it myself and I did it in about 10 minutes. Have fun. Relax. I shot this here at the B&H Photo event space. It's my friend Bernadette. Relax, enjoy, have fun. I don't want to waste your time up here talking to you. I don't want to spend my time up here viewing photos that you may not understand because they get technical and there's a lot of light going on. What I want to do for you is to start shooting and show you how you can do it, okay, and show you techniques that you may not have tried or may not have seen before. So my, my, first, my first lighting setup for you, um, if you looked at the photograph that was on the, the page, the web page uh, for this event, I want to shoot this the same way that I shot that. And what I did there was I used a speed light as my key and a strobe light as my fill. All right, this is a great and fun technique um, that you'll see fashion photographers use, editorial photographers, what did I do, I turned it off. Editorial photographers use, um, where your key is here and your fill is behind you. And you can just wrap that fill all the way around. Okay, so I'm gonna bring Corey up, one of them. I want you to stand right about here, okay? So when we light Corey to begin with, where are we going to light her? Standing right next to me. How would you guys light her? Which side? Of her right or her left? Her right. Her right. Why is that? The part, of hair. part of the hair. Outstanding. You guys have been listening. What's your name again? Mike. Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. So and Richard. Richard. Mike and Richard got it on. You guys got it on. Light from the side of the part. That's the open side of the face. Okay. So turn to me this way, hon. Yeah, back up just a touch. Right about there. Perfect. All right. Good show. All right. So my key will be an SB910 with a large X, uh, Rogue XL Pro. I will drop it down just a touch for some shadow detail. And we'll take our first initial test shot. I'm roughly four feet away from my subject, okay? So um, Corey calls me up and says, Bob, I need headshots. She comes in to me. We're gonna pretend that we don't know one another, right? Mm -hmm. So you walk in the door and I say, hi, how are you? Hi, good. Good, good, okay. <laughs> so if you look at her, she's a little, Little shoulders up a little bit. I want to need to make her feel comfortable. I need to make her feel as though she's welcome in a room full of lighting gear and with somebody she doesn't know, right? So, um, hi Ben, what's going on? What are your headshots for? Uh, just some to apply for some acting things. Okay, okay, all right. So automatically see your hands. She's starting to get a little more comfortable with me. There we go. See that? What kind of music do you like? All rock. How about you? Oh my God, rock and roll. <laughs> I had someone say uh, country, and I was like, okay, the door's over there. <laughs> That's not true. Well, it is true, but I, <laughs> but I didn't tell him to leave. I said, okay, no country, sorry, except Johnny Cash. Um, look what happened to her. She started to laugh. 
Her shoulders are going down. She's getting more comfortable with me, right? It's just like mingling at a party. You want to meet that hot chick in the corner? You want to meet that great looking guy in the corner? Just walk over and start talking. Get that person comfortable with you, okay? And then they'll be happy and they'll get the great shot, which is what we're after. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, so we'll take our initial test shot. Now, I gave you guys the recipe before. Do you remember the recipe? Who remembers that? At? Outstanding. Key light? Manual mode at? Half power. Half power, awesome. Ready, hon? I'm roughly four feet away or so. I want you to turn your body that way. Yep, and swing over to me just like that. Did it work? <laughs> Make sure I'm on the right channel and everything's turned on. Is that on? That's on. That's on. Test it. Yeah, let's test it. Oh, I'll wake up. No, oh, I turned it off. There it is. No. Not again? Did it go into the a unit? Yeah, it went to the unit. Hang on. I may have turned it onto the wrong channel. Oh, there we go. Let's try that. No? Hmm. Technical difficulty. Hang on. Just to let you know, this did work this morning. Oh, no wonder. Wrong channel. Same bat time, same bat channel every time. Uh, yep. Any way to make it a little less cold? Cold in here? You want to put your shawl on? No. Or your scarf? <laughs> no. <laughs> that I, I cannot help you. I'm sorry. Okay. I have my jacket if you like. Okay. I'm not going to model with your jacket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll okay. I'll heat up. Here we go, that should work. Did that work? Yeah. Oh, now it worked. Okay, what do we have? What do we think? Not so good picture of Corey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so good picture of Corey. That's our client saying that, but she's laughing. Let me turn the highlight clipping on. And we're clipping some highlights. We have a lot of hard shadow, right? Why do we have this hard shadow? Go ahead. We have a hard angle and we have a small light source, okay? It's close to, well, it's about four feet away, which is about average. When you guys start doing your portrait work, where do you set your key light? Four feet off the subject, approximately, 45 degree angle, right? So if you stand in the middle of a square room, um, you point to that corner right there. Just point your finger right to that corner, yeah. Right about to there. If you're just standing in a square room, in the middle of the room, point to the, where the walls meet the corner of the ceiling, and that's about where you set your key light, roughly 45 degrees up, 45 degrees off axis of your subject. I think it's a little hard for me. Light's a little hard, shadows are a touch too hard. What do you guys think? Okay. So what shall we do? The aperture. aperture to 6, 3, 8. Six, three seven, eight. I'm going to say 7, 1. Let's about a two-thirds stop. Mike's right on the money. I'm going to drop my aperture just a touch. Perfect, right there. There we have it. I have a little itty bitty thing going on behind her head. I'm gonna have you scoot over that way, but to two inches that way. Right to there, see if we can't get rid of that. Yep, turn that way. Okay, got rid of that, all right. So now we have our portrait starting. I like that dramatic light. I like that shadow alongside the side of her nose and falling off under her chin. That's my kind of lighting style. I really like the dramatic light. However, Corey was after an actor headshot or some kind of headshot for her uh, for commercial use, isn't going to like that. Did you like that? No. First thing she said to me was bad shot of Corey. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get rid of that completely. And we're going to pull out a strobe light. Now, I love this kind of lighting. I'll push my light up, aim it down. And what I want to do is I want to fill this area here with fill light. And what this is going to do is going to flatten out some of those shadows, okay? 
Uh, I, I really study light a lot. I study how people are uh, shooting. I like this kind of look because it removes the reflector. You don't need a reflector on a stand. You don't need to have your subject hold a reflector. You can do a two light headshot or upper body shot with key and wrapping fill. Make sure everything's turned on. I'm on the right channel. Channel C, channel four. I'm at low power. I'm on, this is the lowest power I can get. And light is just gonna bounce out of the reflect, out of the umbrella and just come this way all the way around. I will push the power up until I find that I like it. So we'll turn on channel C. And we'll give it a whirl. What do we say? Yeah, turn your body that way. Yeah, keep going, keep going. I want you to face this way. Put your hand here and kind of swing around to me like that. Yep, drop your hair off your face though. That's it. And bring your shoulders around. There we go. Oh, nothing went off. <laughs> this didn't? Everything worked. Channel four, yeah. Channel four. Channel C. On. There it is. Wow. Okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey. Wow. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, turn to me. Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> Bring your shoulders back. That's a ticket just like that. Head this way a little more. Right there. Chin down. Right there. Perfect. Now we should have it. Woohoo. Wake everything up. See the difference? Let's go back. Okay, this one, and we will go here. Look at the difference in the shadows. See it? Photo on the left is the one without the fill light. Photo on the right is the one with the fill light. What do we think? Like the first one better? Yeah. With the hard shadows? Yeah. I think it's just the face. I'm just making a funny face. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys like the harder shadows better? Yeah. Well, we have to adjust exposure as we go. Well, it's too hot. We have to drop our exposure a little bit. Right. Well, we brought in all this extra external light. It's even. It took out a lot of the hard shadows. There's still shadow detail there, but it took the harshness out of it. So I would probably push this up a little more to flatten that out. Maybe half a stop, and then we'll drop our aperture. How much? Another quarter, so we'll go to f8, f8 point, or 9.3. 9.3, another two thirds stop. Whoops. Right down. Mm -hmm. just like that, swing around, shoulder, a little more shoulder. That's a ticket, that's a ticket, yeah, right there. There it is, okay. You have that beautiful frontal fill without that, a reflector. I like that shot right there. I don't know about you guys, but I am good with that. Okay? My other, hang on, hang on. My other thing for you, my other idea for this uh, workshop when I put it together, was I wanted to use basic gear. So if you don't own strobe light and you go to buy, purchase a kit, whatever kit that is, most kits are going to come with a light and an umbrella and a stand. Okay? This is the kit umbrella. This is the one light that came in the kit. So everything is kit based. I have not purchased anything beyond what came in the kit. And that's a key goal. So that you don't run out and buy that huge three foot by four foot softbox for $400. And then have it sit in the corner. Because I did that. I had a five foot octobox that I assembled and could not get apart again. And then when I sold it, aren't they a nightmare? They're a nightmare. I think it was a nightmare. I couldn't get it apart. So when I, I drive a pickup truck, so when I would travel with it, I would put it in the back of my truck assembled. <laughs> what a disaster. So then I, I finally said to myself, I am done with this thing. I'm going to sell it. To get it apart, I had to bend the rods. So I had to buy all new rods to sell it. So I lost money on that deal. <laughs> that was a bad deal. But my goal is to get you to use what comes with the kit. Right? We haven't used anything out of the ordinary yet. No crazy softbox, no beauty dish, no 
uh, strip softbox, grids, nothing of that nature. We are just working simply. Perfect right there. Hold on a bit more, see that? But I'm keeping this light back. If, uh, if I move this light closer, my apertures are going to go deeper and deeper because there's so much light coming out. I want this light back. I don't particularly like that shot. I like the shot before. I do like the light though. Even though I have the loop light, it's softer. Okay, ready on? Right there, drop the chin right there, perfect, yep. Put your hand back on your hip like this and open that shoulder up. Okay, now we're picking up some shadow from her hair. See that we're picking up some more shadow detail from her hair. I would probably move this back to zero point and keep this here just to open up the full frontal. Now we'll add a hair light. And I'll add my speed light. Then we'll get some hair and shoulder light here. This is um, B. So I'll turn uh, channel B on, or group B rather. And we will go to manual mode, and we will make it a one quarter power. Okay, so I talked about this before. Ratios, are we talking about ratios yet? We're looking into ratios, but not exactly. Right, my key lights half power, my, bat, my hair and shoulder lights quarter power. That's a two to one ratio, all right? But we're not gonna talk about that yet. We're gonna talk about the fact that this is, you're making me French toast, Jerome. Now you got a measuring cup full of milk. One over one, one over two, one over four, right on down the line. Simplify, simplify. Get ready, hon? Here we have a hair light. What do we think? So we have a key light, we have a fill light, we have a hair light. Ready? I want you to turn back to this side again. Yep. Now let's talk about posing a little bit. I have her standing. I have her body facing in opposite direction and I have her swinging around to me. I want you to stand right straight up to me. Right to there. Headshot. Now turn to that way. Yeah, if you could. Put your hand on your hip and swing over. Perfect, just like that. Drop the shoulder a little bit. Yeah, pull the hair off. Yep. Excellent. Okay, if we look at the prior photo, prior photo is flat. There's nothing happening. She has, there's nothing dynamic about her at all whatsoever. And that's what we want. We want to turn our subject around. Get them away from us. Okay, the first shot, eh, not much happening. Second shot, a little more dynamic. A little more, something moving. There's some um, dyna dynamism in her pose, all right? We have a key light, we have fill light, we have hair light, we have a simple three light um, headshot with two speed lights and a strobe, all right? So what I wanna do now is we're gonna, I'm going to have Corey sit and we'll talk about some poses for sitting. Okay, we all good with that? Everybody good so far? Okay, good, okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, don't sit down, we're gonna stand up. I'm gonna do, I, let's do that next. I was gonna do that last, but since you brought it up, we'll do it next, that's okay. Katja brought up the uh, rim light, or edge light. So um, if you, I did a five strobe light port headshot last weekend and I'm moving more into more lighting for my headshots because I like that edge light look. So Katya wants to add edge light on both sides. How would I do it? All right, if I had this setup right here, how would I do it? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's, I was gonna do it last, but let's do it now because you brought it up. It's okay. So what I'm going to do is this. What I would like to do is get edge light on Corey on both sides. So I will change this flash bender. And if you look, these are really great. That's it. That's a done deal. And we will edge light, Corey, from both sides. 
I will install the strip softbox attachment. Give me that narrow strip. All right. When I did this last weekend, and I'm actually going to do it this Saturday when I have another headshot sitting, is I would install this on either side of the client and get shoulder, edge, and hair right there. Okay. So the key light will be the, that right there. Again, I'm working simply. I'm working with gear that comes in the kit and gear that you may already own, but not gear that's too expensive. I have a, a Chimera three foot by four foot softbox back in my studio, which is amazing. And it's also set you back an amazing amount. So it's gonna lighten your wallet. So if you can get what you want without lightening your wallet, then that's the key. That's why we're here with speed lights and say you bought one strobe. Say someone gave you a strobe. I actually got given a battery pa a pack and two heads about six years ago. And uh, it's awesome. They're an old pair of photogenics. There's no control. You plug it in and that's it. it that's it. Um, actually, there's, there's, there's four ports, 400 watt seconds, 200 watt seconds, 150 and 150. They came out of a picture people that went out of business. My buddy was doing the fit up. He said, come and get it. And it was awesome, but you have no control. You have no, so if you get someone to give you something, it's even better. Okay, stay right there, hon. So we'll do edge and shoulder. And what I like to do here is I would drop this down just a touch. I will send this forward a little bit. Make these approximately the same height. Okay, if I can do that by eye. Okay, here we go, edge and edge. Now for our key, I will bring my strobe light in and we will work with over and under beauty. Anybody ever do over and under beauty? One of my favorite lighting looks, absolutely favorite lighting looks, especially on females. It's beautiful light for females. I've done it with men with not so great results, especially with someone like me who has a really ruddy northern uh, Irish skin, right? you would see everything. But it's really cool for a football player where they do all that processing and they're all jacked up. That's just not me, sorry. So we'll go to over and under beauty. I will set my key light here. I will put it on this side of her part and I will give Corey my reflector. I will be using a white umbrella so we'll stick with the white side of the reflector. What do we say? You hold that right underneath there, hon? You can actually see, you turn. You can see this work. Can you see it? Is it working? Is it working? Yeah. Okay, turn to me. Lower just a touch. So I can get in there right about to there. So I have key, fill, two edge lights. My two edge speed lights will be manual mode uh, at one quarter power. So we'll set that right here. And then my key light, I will go back down to the lowest power setting at five. Here, I don't have the control, okay, of the strobe light. I have the control over the speed lights. If it's okay, I can reach everything, and we'll give it a shot. You need to drop that down just a touch on, just on your, below your hip, right about to there. Okay, needs a little bit of adjustment. What do you think? It's a little dark for me on the foreground, so I think we have to adjust exposure, right? I like the hair light. I love the hair on edge and shoulder light. I think that's the coolest thing of the whole look, all right? And that's two speed lights. I also have a touch of uh, flare going on. So I think what I'll do is I'll turn these lights just a touch and get some of the light from coming into my camera, out of my camera. You have to lower this just a touch more, on right about to there, okay? And I think I will drop this down just a little bit like that. I want to get more light coming this way and bouncing back off the reflector. So how are we in exposure? Shall we keep it there or shall we move it? What do we say? 6-3. Six, 6-3? Three. Six, three? I'm at 9, so that's a full stop. Well, full stop. Full stop. I'm going to go 2 thirds. How's that, Mike? OK. I want you to turn to the side. Yeah? No, no, no. Whole body. Yeah? <laughs> I almost said like you have a pizza. I'll take, my, I'll take pepperoni. <laughs> and swing this right around so it's under there. Perfect. Yep, but turn your head. There you go. Shoulders and hips. <laughs> the 
Much better. Yeah. Two, I think one stop would have been just a touch too heavy. You? You could do one stop because the forehead's still a little bit shiny. So our head's still shiny. I went down two thirds of a stop, so but it's, I've not clipped any highlight. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a makeup thing. If you have someone come into you, have them bring powder with them. Okay, this is a makeup skin uh, interaction with the light. If you had a soft box or a beauty dish with a sock over it, you wouldn't get that as much. The light out of the umbrella is still kind of hard, even though it's wrapping and coming out all over the place. It's still pretty hard. So I have a two. I have a three light setup. Right? I can own two speed lights and a strobe light. I can intermix everything I want. I have good color tone. Right? Everything matches across the frame. Okay. Let's do that again. I really like that look. Yeah. Make sure my piece is in front. <laughs> Perfect. One more. Awesome. I'm going to come back a little bit. Yep. Yeah, right there. Drop the shoulder. Right there. Drop the chin to touch. What do we think? Simple, easy. Okay, you want a rim light? We'll give you a rim light. Here I'll have to drop the power down a lot because I'm so close to her. Okay. Feels like a really large cocktail tray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull these back. Okay, good. You have to be careful with your rim lights. One of the things that happens with rim lighting, and I just had this happen, um, is that it, what happens with, with rim lighting is you kind of get into a position where your client has to stay in one place. Once they move to one side, if one light overpowers the other, you'll have that shadow coming from that side. So literally, I want to put my lights here, roughly the same height, kind of aim them a little bit to the back, all right, so I don't capture too much on her face. I just want to grab this. This is a technical side of photography where you set your lights, see what you're getting, reset your lights, see what you're getting, okay? I move my lights in pretty close to her, so what should we do with power? Turn it down. Turn it down. We are at 1 eighth power. 16th or 32nd? 1 32nd. You guys are good. Why am I here again? 1 32nd, oops. Oops. One thirty second. Let's see what we get. Yep, make sure you get my pizza. Okay, it's almost imperceptible. See that? Yeah. Almost imperceptible. Separate. It does separate her, but you're not getting anything on the edge of her. Is that what you want? You want something on the edge? Yes, definitely. Yes. So I'm going to pull them forward just a touch, and I'm going to, I'll push the power up just a little bit. We're at 132nd. Maybe I should go to a 16th. What do you say? Yeah, would you move her instead of lights? I mean, like, back a little bit, or is it the key light? Key light is set, so I would move my lights in the back first before I started moving her around. Um, this becomes more specific when you start adding a lot more lighting, okay? The last weekend, I, not last weekend, the weekend before, I had seven strobe lights going, okay? <laughs> That's when your lighting becomes highly technical because you're, you're key, you have fill, you have edge, you have background, two lights on background. I had a key light, I had an edge light uh, with a four foot strip box, another edge light, four foot strip box, uh, gridded beauty dish in the background, gridded strobe in the background, um, and a, a snooted uh, light just on the face. All right, it's a very specific glamour kind of look. Seven lights, it was really difficult to do I metered everything, and it takes a while. Uh, at that point, I would not have my talent here. I'd have a, an assistant or somebody else standing. When you get to that point where you're using multiple lights, then ratios become more important, okay? Position of light becomes more important. Uh, if she moves in a certain direction, this light will cross her face, and you'll see a huge thing going like that on one side of the cheek or the other. So it becomes very specific, all right? So it, and it takes longer. Oh my God, it took a long time to figure all that out. I mean, you call me the master, so I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, ready? Pizza. Thank you. Yep, drop it. You can do it. Um, can you bring that arm down a little bit? Yeah, that's it. Bring your arms in. 
Yeah, drop my shoulder. And swing over it this turn. That way. There you go. Great. Yep. Yeah. Did we get anything? No? Still not. Let's see. Oh, it would help if I pushed the power up. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Okay. Now we're getting there. Yeah. Now we're getting there. See it? You see the difference from the prior photo. I'm going to add, I will add some more power. Let's bring this right up. I'm going to bring this right up back up to a quarter. Let's see what we get. Let's really push the power. One quarter, one quarter. Yeah, let's push the power right up, right there. There we have it. It's a little too hot for me. What do you think? And you, got you have spill on those. See it? You have spill on those, and you have spill on the right side of the chest. See that? Okay. This is where you have to start being careful about exposure, uh, paying attention to um, everything. I like the brightness of the, of the photograph. I think I like the brighter edges, you know? For me personally, I would light a little bit back and bring that light. Just, yeah, turn the lights away from her just a touch. Maybe we'll do that. Just a little bit off that way and a little off this way. So you get the edge light definition, but you're kind of sending your cross light back here instead of in front. Again, when you position your lights, this becomes important because look, we nailed, we got Right side of her nose, now we're clipping. See this shadows here, under her hair? That's too much for me. Here, too much for me. Here is okay, all right? This is where you becomes, it becomes very technical and you have to practice a lot. And even for me, you know, I adjust all the time. They're on, perfect. I'm still getting it. See, I'm still getting that spill. Still getting that spill. Um, it's actually, it looks like it's even worse than it was before. See that? Let's try moving our lights back here, just a touch. So we get the edge definition, but we missed some of that spill on her face. No, we're good. We're good. Yeah, right to there. I think we're good right there. All right? We'll get the edge definition, and we'll miss some of that spill. Go ahead. No, so Katya says she wants to break the rules and move the model into the light, out of the light, then move the key light. You can absolutely do whatever you want. There are no rules to be broken. Okay? Because then you can take the, actually, let's try that. You can take the key light. Okay, that's better for me. That's much better for me. That's what you want. You want to bring your lights back and shift them out just a touch to grab that edge. And now I would start adjusting power. It's a little too hot on her right side. Okay, so then I can adjust maybe, maybe a two-thirds of a stop down, not a full stop on power. Speed lights only. Everything in the front remains the same. Perfect. Just like that, hon. Perfect. We're almost there. We're literally almost there, OK? I'm adjusting backlights off my camera, off the radio trigger completely. So we're almost there. So we have a simple, very nice looking uh, three light headshot, OK, in the beauty style. Right. If I were to do this as a traditional beauty shot, I would, this would be a um, soft box or a, a beauty dish with the sock on it. Yes, Kaya? What happens if uh, this is, let's say, reversal, reversal of relic between the black and will turn it around? So, you want to, so Kaya wants to go shoot through. You guys want to try shoot through? 
Why not? You are so lucky that I came prepared. You know how prepared I am? I am so prepared and so dedicated that I thought if the weather really turned, I have a change of underwear and a toothbrush right here. That's how dedicated I am. So I can land in a hotel or at my cousin's apartment if I need to. <laughs> All right, so we'll go shoot through umbrella. Now that will give us a lot more power. Well, what's going to happen is you'll have more light directed at your subject because the light's coming out of here straight. Here it's reflected back. Even though it's reflected back, it's still pretty hard. All right, the light coming out of an umbrella is still fairly hard. Shooting through is different. What amazes me is how different shooting through can look. So we have a shoot through umbrella. We'll slip this into the, into the mounting thing. All right. Now here, instead of, instead of um, here we, we reverse everything. Sorry, I'll stay right there. And this goes downhill instead of going uphill. Now I have to pay attention to light placement and exposure because the lights will be so much harder coming through here. Let's try the white side again, hon. Let's see what we get. Okay, so if you look, let's go back to the previous photo. If you look, if you took a really hard look at the photograph, all right, the light from the reflective umbrella is throwing light everywhere. Shoot through is a more directed, see that? So my shadows are different. See how the shadows are coming under her nose differently, under her chin? All the shadows are different. <coughs> Because I'm directing my light, even though it's going through the umbrella, I'm directing it to a specific location. This, I may drop this light a little further down, either that or maybe pull up the silver side of the reflector. The silver side will bring up a lot of those shadows. So turn that, turn that thing around, hon. That's a ticket right there. I'm also going to drop my light just a touch and get it aimed more towards this area and right to here, okay? Before, it was kind of skimming over the top of her head. Perfect. Yeah, right there. Got the there we go. Now we're back to something that I prefer. Okay. But the light, it's softer. The light is softer. It's also slightly warmer. Let's go back to the other photo. Not only is it softer, okay, this is the reflective umbrella, this is the shoot-through umbrella, not only is the light softer, it's warmer. You can notice, even with my terrible eyes, that I have a cooler tone here, brighter on the forehead, I have a warmer tone here, and not as bright on the forehead. See that? The reflective umbrella throws so much, but it's also fairly hard which I always found amazing that, that it could be that hard and just throwing light everywhere. I actually prefer this one. You guys? It's okay, raise your hand. Okay, same deal. I would probably swing this light or maybe have her step forward to me a little bit because I don't like that li on the light on the edge a touch. So bring the reflector back up on, yep, step like an inch right there is perfect. It's Gary, right? So Gary says it wouldn't be as um, noticeable if you weren't shooting tethered. You're right. You have to really pay attention to your LCD, zoom in, um, pay attention to where light is falling. Everything in photography is about what? Light. Light is everything. Where you place it, how you modify it, how you use it effectively. So you really need to, be, need to become a student of it. I'm a student of light and of people's faces. I want to know, if you came to me for a headshot, you walk in that door, immediately I'll be thinking about how I'm going to light you, with or without your glasses. Let's try it one more time, Ron. You ready? 
Yeah? Perfect. I'm good with that. You guys okay with that? Okay. So we went over a few things. We did two lighting looks. We'll go to a third lighting look right now. And I think we'll maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do a Q&A or try to go to a fourth. I like the shoot through. I think the shoot through gives you a softer look, okay? When light passes through something white, what happens to it? Warm. Say it again. Warmer. All right. <laughs> when light passes through something white, it gets warmer. All right, so you'll notice a, a shift in color tone. This is not a, a, a shift in color balance from the light bulbs. This is a shift in color tone because of the modifier. Okay, you will notice this probably more than you'll notice anything else. If you put a large soft box on that has a white interior, you will warm the light coming out of it. If you put a soft box on that has a silver interior, the light's a little more contrasty, okay, a, little, a touch harder. Once you begin to know and understand this and look for this, then you'll be really beginning to understand light and how it affects and interacts with your subject. Okay? On a reflective umbrella, I would have asked her to put a little more powder on her forehead. Because you still had that highlight. Even though it wasn't clipped, it was still there. Right? I just shot a gal on Sunday. She was African American and she had that. Right here. And that's called the T-zone. Right? You guys have got the T-zone? where you have highlights here, highlights here. This is normally the places that you're clipping highlights immediately. And she had the most beautiful, she was the most beautiful woman. Almost, she was amazingly beautiful. But still, right, it's the T-zone. That's the bad zone. So you bring um, powder, or have your subject bring powder with them, and you can control that. But I like the look of the shoot-through because it mimics that of a softbox. What I want to do for you now is a technique that I do a lot with speed lighting. And we'll stick with the shoot-through umbrella. If you don't own anything beyond a reflector and a couple of lights, own a shoot-through umbrella. Because what you can do with it is amazing. We'll do this, then we'll do the collapsed umbrella, then we'll wrap it up. How's that? All right, fair enough. So I don't have a family here, all right, but I have a gorgeous model. Okay? We're gonna do, I'm going to show you how to light. One of the things that I do is that we'll, we will light from what side of Corey? Hard side. Hard side. Outstanding. Okay, I will bring my key light here. I will keep those edge lights for you. Gotcha, how's that? Okay. Now I don't have a light stand to mount my reflector to, but I'm going to have her hold it right about here. Okay, right about to there is perfect, yep. Yep, okay. Now when you light, there's an old adage in photography, you don't light your subject, what do you do? Who said that? You get the door prize, what's your name? Douglas, I don't know what that prize is, but you got it. <laughs> so I'm not, so previously, we kind of aimed our light at her face. Toward, we, we split the difference, right? Light was pretty much aimed at the chest to get light on the hair, uh, forehead, hair, forehead, right down here, and bounce off the reflector. Here, I'm going to move, I will move my light. I will not light my subject. I will aim my light towards what? The reflector. And then we wrap our subject in light. See that? I do this a lot and I teach this when I teach speed lighting. Because when you take a speed light, even with the diffusion dome on it, it's coming out of that speed light hard and fast. Speed lighting is not made for this, right? But we're making it do what we want. So I will actually aim this more towards my reflector. I will aim it down just a touch, I think. Okay? And let's see what we get. What do you guys say? You didn't say anything. Oh, it didn't come up? There it is. <laughs> okay, ready now? What do we think? Okay, we said, wow. Outstanding. Okay? <laughs> no clipped highlights. Beautiful, warm skin tone. Outstanding skin tone. Great color. Okay? Where do we aim our light? To the reflector. If I aim my light more towards my subject, I will deepen the shadows. If I aim it to the reflector, I've opened up all of this. See that? All that's opened up. 
and you have the key light here and you have the reflector you can just about see down there. I would like, I love um, the dynamic light. I love the dynamic pose. I love that, that light that sculpts people. You know, like the very first shot we had, I like that. I like those deep shadows. I like that dr that's drama for me. If you have a flatly lit subject, it looks flat. But you can do a lot with posing and just swinging, swinging your light around a little bit, you know, or move, set your light in one place and you move around. So watch this. This is a tip that I try and teach everybody. Uh, let me swing the light about. Then we'll go to the last look. All right, can you put the, uh, the uh, reflector back up, hon? Yep, just like that. That's perfect. All right, I'm going to drop it down just a little bit. A little bit. Okay, what I want to show you is this. So you're, if, if, if Steven, if you're, if you set your couple wherever you're going to set them, set your key light in one place, right? And watch this. This is a technique that I bring up a lot, and I do, and I try to teach everybody to do. You've got a couple, say you're in Central Park, right? It's a beautifully lit day, but you want to add a little bit of light, so you bring a speed light, you bring an umbrella, so you got some background light, you have some foreground light, you have this great shot going, all right? You can change everything by you moving. So let's take a look, watch this. Look right to the front, hon. Okay, I'm moving. She's not, is she? Your couple is sitting down in the park. They're having a little they picnic blanket out. They're all happy because they're not married yet, right? <laughs> yep, stay right there. Look right to me. Now look over to the thing, right to that, perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm with a tight lens here, so I'm kind of I'm kind of limited. But I can change the look of my photo, I can change the look of the shadows, I can change everything. They're sitting down, they're enjoying themselves, bottle of wine, everybody's happy. You set your light in one place, you move around. You move around. And you can change everything. Like that. You know, you, you can forget about light ratios, you can forget about, forget about everything, just work. Just let it, let it fly. And if you're shooting raw, you can fix it. Right? If you're underexposed a little bit in one corner or the face or one side, you can do a little bit later on. You want to try and stay out of Photoshop, right? But that's your savior that will help you. So I don't shoot a lot of, um, I don't shoot a lot of that, but I, that's, I would do it totally, you know, absolutely. Because you know, if you're happy and in love, go for it, man. Who cares? It's awesome. Whoops. All right, so I can change the look of my photo just by moving around. Actually, what we'll do is we'll drop the speed lights out. And we'll bring in the second strobe light. Even though we're mixing and matching, let's just do this for this last quick look. Okay, yep, right about to there, should be good. Yep, no, back up just a touch on, right there, over there. Yep, okay, so my key light's about four feet away, hair and edge light's about four feet away. My power cord will be in the way, so we'll just get rid of that really quickly. All right, I'm completely on strobe, and I will start back at the magic numbers, 1125th, 5.6. Okay, ready, hon? Yep. Okay, well that's my hair light. <laughs> okay, I shut that light down, all right? I shut the light down off the background. Let me turn the background light off. This is channel two, we'll go to channel one. And right there, huh? Hmm. Oh, the slave is on. So we have key and fill. We have hard light like we had before. See that? What I want to do is this. I'm going to turn this light uh, slave off. I will turn that light off here. We'll be on channel one, and we'll do something slightly more dramatic. Let's side light you on right there. Yeah, I want you to look up into the light. Yeah, turn to me just a touch right there. Perfect.
now. This is my kind of light. Look up to the light on. Yep, to me. Turn your head to me. Right there. All right, now we're into Rembrandt lighting. See that? See the, the diamond shape, the triangular shape on her left cheek? Okay, it's a little more pronounced on the previous photo. Right there. This is my kind of light, and I like that dramatic light. And you can, this would be strip softbox light with a grid, or a softbox with a grid, and we shut all of our light down with just an umbrella, which came in our kit. Now we'll turn the back light on. Right to the light on. Right there, perfect. There we have it. Okay, shall we add a third light? Who wants to add a speed light? What shall we do with it? Fill in the front? No, no fill in the front. Background. Who wants, who wants an 80s portrait, back of the head? <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay, and th at this point, I will turn this uh, speed light and I'll put it into slave mode. Okay, so this is a Nikon SB800. I will put this into slave mode. So what will happen is, when these fire, this will fire. I don't need a trigger for this. Actually, I will even prove to you I don't need a trigger for this. We'll take the trigger off completely. You do that with a cannon? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Cannons have slave mode. Uh, what flashes do you have? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I'm going to keep the light just below her head, fairly level. See what I did to my head here? I swiveled it because I want the light to go this way. All right. I'm going to, I will hide it right behind her. So we have edge light here. We have key light. Let's see if we can go back to 1983 and see what we get. Did it go? No, it didn't go. Hang on. Oh, wrong setting. Hang on, sorry. Okay, that should be it. Hopefully it will work this time. Oh, there it is. There it is. What do we think? That's it, welcome to 1983. That is a Donna Summer cover shot, right there. Come on, man, that is a Donna Summer cover shot. 1983, look right to me, hon. Perfect. Okay, there we have it. I will bring my key light around just a touch, I think. Right about to there. Shall we color it? Shall we put a gel on it? Yeah. What color? Red. Red? No, she has a purpley blue dress on. What do you guys think? Come on. Green. Green? Oh my God. Blue. Blue. Oh, blue right in the front. Okay. When you gel your flashes, be careful. What happens is this is a blue, dark blue gel with a three and a half stop loss of light. This thing is so thick, it's worth three and a half stops. So what I will do is I'm going to push my power up from one half to full power on this backlight. Full power, okay. So we have a blue gel. What do you think? Let's rock it out. Wow. 
Oh, look at that. <laughs> now we're in a nightclub. I'm taking that, you guys. I think I like that. That's fun. One more time on. <laughs> and disco ball. We need the disco ball. Oh, it didn't fire. See that? Here's the problem you're going to run into with speed lights when you, um, when you run them at full power. When you run them at full power, you just kill the batteries. And it's longer recycle times, OK? So that's something to be wary of. Uh, I forgot to put the battery pack on. so. That's an issue. But even still, uh, your AA batteries will just deplete and deplete and deplete until they're no more. All right? And you have to swap them out or recharge them. Well, it's five minutes to three. I'm about at my time. Uh, what do you guys think? Why don't you have a seat, hon? Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.